today I kind of wanted to talk about um, art off the page because comics are rad and comics are awesome, but you know, they're flat. They're pieces of paper. And there's so much more to the world. So um, we have up here today with us lovely people. We have Robert Wilson IV. Uh, you've done books like Heartthrob, I know off the top uh -huh. of my head, and but I want to talk to you today mostly about your cool comic posters and oh, your, okay, cool. your really neat stuff. Um, we just started. Your Gundam par prints, your foils and stuff. Great. And Rico Renzi is here. Rico, if you ha don't know anything about Rico, he is a colorist. is amazing. Uh, he's worked on Spider-Gwen. You're doing Grimm right now, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And She-Hulk. Yeah. Um, if you want to check out coloring stuff, you should definitely check out his Instagram because you've got some cool processes. Thank you. And over here, we have Hoyt Silva, who's amazing. He's got some cool web comics and some print comics. Yeah. But uh, everyone up here, like I said, we have branched out from comics. So um, I know two of you are working on some clothing stuff and uh, posters. So Hoyt, I'm fascinated. You're sure. a sneakerhead. And you announced not too long ago, I want to say February-ish? Yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. You, you were going to start working on a sneaker line. That's right, that's right. So uh, I've officially started my own sneaker company. Um, you know, LLC'd out and everything like that. Uh, all the paperwork's in. Um, I'm actually in, like, the prototype phase for my first shoe. So I've contacted uh, manufacturers overseas, um, getting them to make, like, you know, just various different styles of the shoe that I want until I find, like, a manufacturer um, that can handle what I want to do. And I'm going to try to do something boutique. It's not going to be anything too crazy to start, but you know, I've always loved sneakers my entire life. I've always wanted the opportunity to design and create sneakers. Um, you know, I kind of realized that I just wasn't being presented that opportunity, so I decided that I would like try to do it myself. So. That's, that's fascinating. Yeah. So when you're designing, are you looking more to do like, um, because we've all seen those really cool like kicks and stuff where they've kind of printed on comics and stuff. Are you looking to do more design type stuff? Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm not a big fan of just like, you know, like I always wanted to be like the first comic book artist with a, with a sneaker deal. But I didn't want it to just be like my art printed on a sneaker because um, I think that's just like lame, <laughs> to be fair. Um, so I always wanted to be able to like design or have my own sneaker line, you know, much like Air Jordan or any of those guys. So um you know, uh, in that regard, you know, I think like I'll be taking a lot more like design elements and cues as we go through. Um, I'm first starting with a very like classic simple silhouette because I think like going for something too crazy right off the bat might not be as relatable to most people, you know. Um, so going for something a little more classic, but uh, for my second shoe that I already have plans for, um, you know, that'll be a little bit, a little bit different. So I'm excited. Ease in. Yeah, ease yeah, into the yeah. weird. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm um, with it. So, Robert, you've done posters. You've yeah. done, like, uh, official concert posters for Metallica. Yeah. And uh, I got Weird Al. Yeah, I've done a kind of wild variety of concert posters and some T-shirts and stuff like that. Um, and it just kind of, like, started going to concerts and getting to know promoters and uh, mostly, from like, promoters from venues mm -hmm. and just kind of snowballed to the point where... Um, you know, getting getting approached by bands like Metallica or Weird Al uh, or the Mountain Goats. I did some tour stuff for them. Um, and uh, yeah, it was not necessarily something that I ever uh, thought that I was going to like pursue career-wise, but uh, I just always loved poster art and I especially love screen printing uh, and kind of like limited palette design. Uh, and uh, I don't know, it's when you do things, people tend to hire you to do more of that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, yeah, it's like I didn't pursue Weird Al hiring me to do a poster, but they saw what I had done, and uh, yeah, and, it, and it's kind of opened up other interesting opportunities too. Like, I'm doing some package design stuff for action figures right oh, now, very cool, yeah, which is super exciting. Like, uh, uh, when I get discouraged about how things are going career-wise, which I feel like all, every creative does at one time or another, but maybe more, more frequently than not, uh, I will always think of like 10-year-old Robert and be like, oh, if 10-year-old Robert saw this, he would like 
die of excitement, you know? I, I was gonna say, I have to ask, just how did the meeting with Weird Al Yankovic go? <laughs> Weird, Al, Weird Al is like a for real sweetheart. Mm -hmm. I have worked, uh, so Metallica and Weird Al are probably the two like biggest names that I've worked for. There's a third that's up there, but I hated working with them so much. Fair. I never even posted the the poster on Instagram. <laughs> like, well, don't I, I was not a big fan. Thankfully, I was not a big fan of this band beforehand. <laughs> but I hate them now. Yeah. <laughs> I hate them. I'm one of those songs. No, yeah. no, 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 I like you. I like you. Under hat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, he's got a hat to put it on. It's true. Uh, and so I was kind of nervous mm -hmm. because I had just come off this like really bad experience. And Weird Al's management contacted me and the art director of the poster series, which is Tim Doyle, who's also yeah. at the show this weekend. Um, and asked if I wanted to be part of this poster series where Al had a different poster for each night of his orchestral tour. And they assigned each artist a song and they assigned me uh, Amish Paradise, which was like <laughs> the first song that hooked me, right? That was like per perfect. Uh, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he invited all the artists to go see him and meet him afterwards. And like he took the time to just like hang out for a bit and was super sweet to me and my wife and knew which poster, not only the poster I did, but also that Tim did. And uh, yeah, man, he was just a really uh, generous and genuine guy. I uh, have a ton of respect for him. That's very cool. Thank you for sharing yeah, that. Yeah, of course. Just, I, like, I had to fan out for a second. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he was great. He's very tall. Wow. He's, like I'm a six three, and I he's I don't think he's taller than me, but he's at least as tall as me. That's impressive. Yeah, it's a big guy. Uh, Rico, I have to tell you, I had a problem getting ready this morning because I didn't want to wear the shirt of the band I was going to see. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. I have so many of your shirts, though. You got my sticker on your. I do. I do there. have your sticker on. <laughs> um, Rico makes some great shirts, and and real talk. If you ever see a bump on Mondays, it's because I've been wearing your Craven shirt. <laughs> <laughs> what made you kind of wanted to branch out into that? Um, that's kind of where I got started with art. Was um, like I was in bands and designing shirts for the bands I was in, and like Robert said, when you do something you get known for it and other bands would ask me to do shirts and posters and stuff so I mean that's how I started doing it and so when I started doing comics it was kind of just like you know what I did so I just did it yeah <laughs> like um I know I did you did you sell completely out of those Kylo Ren Gibson oh yeah I've, I've sold through that one a few times uh, I, I've probably done three runs of that one so I, I since you work so much in color, how do you change the color palette when you're shifting to something like fabric? Do, I mean, do you have um, to take into account? I mean, it's like what Robert was talking about, the simple colors of screen printing. I, I mean, there's direct-to-garment printing where you can do like full color stuff like the Craven stuff, but I still think like a screen printer and just, if I can have it be just one color, like I'll, that's ideal for me, just mm -hmm. like a two-color shirt. Um, so I don't really think. It's really a different thing than coloring comics, like, to me, just more simple. So I, just starting with the base fact that everybody up here loves comics, it feels like everybody's really passionate about the projects that aren't comics, which is cool. How do you get that passion from, or from what you're doing now onto the page? Like, how do you change, reverse that image, like, if that makes sense? Um, yeah, it's, it's different things for me. Like when I do shirts and stuff, I'm, I'm primarily thinking of like a shirt I would want to wear, like, or, mm -hmm. you know, stuff for me, it's really selfish. And, you know, I'll, I'll put them online and say, you know, I want to wear this shirt. Does anybody else want to wear it so I can make it? And <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, people will tell you pretty quickly, yes or no, like yeah. with their money, like if, if you can, if they want it. Um, but for comics, I mean, I, I guess I'm mostly motivated by like, working with, collaborating with creative people I like, and um, money. Money is fantastic. Paying the bills. Um, I, yeah. 
paying bills is great. But, like, <laughs> and, but there's something I've noticed also with all of y'all. There are pro you attach yourself to teams that you like and that are, are generally pretty solid. Um, so just just FYI, like y'all, if I see your names on stuff, <laughs> like, oh, there's a good thing. It's, it's like um, a, a good cosign. Like yeah. if you it's uh, like Clayton Cowles is a letterer. I'm like, oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. So how do you start branching? So you you had band shirts, right? Mm -hmm. You started that, and you went to promotions and concerts and such. How'd you get into shoes? Uh, just that, that one. I, I just I'm really curious about that. So I grew up in New York. Um, sneaker culture is like really big in New York City. Um, you know, I just kind of grew up, and I didn't grow up with a lot of money, so I grew up like you know just kind of seeing a lot of people rocking like really awesome stuff and how cool I thought that stuff was. And um, you know, in uh, ninth grade. Uh, I was like able to save up some money on the side to buy my first pair of J's. I was a pair of eights, uh, and you know, like from there, like I absolutely just like fell in love with like sneakers in general. You know, um, I just like the way they look. I think like just it's a really awesome way to express yourself. You know, I think especially in today's like. Um, society where and like culture where there's just so much and so many different options and all kinds of crazy awesome stuff you can do you can really like express yourself through your footwear um, and you know it's like I think like my connection with it ends up being like uh, a lot of like just moments in my life you know like because I'm a sneakerhead and I pay attention to the sneakers that I'm wearing when I'm wearing like a sneaker and something happens or like something you know like marks the occasion I tend to tie that memory like a lot of times like to the pair of kicks I was wearing as funny as that sounds so you know I got married in my favorite pair of J's I you know like everything like that you know so I'm silly like that but my wife like totally supports it so she's actually now a sneakerhead herself you know I think most of it came from jealousy of all the packages showing up at the house and she was just kind I'm like, yeah, I want some of that. So once I started, and she was getting on my case about buying so many shoes, and you know, then I started buying them for her, and it was better. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it is just like the culture and where I, what I grew up around, and um, you know, those influences. My brother um, and my cousin were big influences on me when I was young. They played a lot of basketball. They, um, you know, we just grew up in the neighborhood, so it was a lot of just like that culture and influence that sort of just seeped through. Um, and it just became attached to me, you know, like my entire life. I've just always, since then, I've always just tried to have nice kicks and, you know, rock something different. And, you know, like my favorite question is, you know, what are those or where'd you get those, you know? So that's the, yeah, I think that's like what got me into it at first. And, and then to continue the question that you, you had asked Rico there, um, I think also uh, how it translates to me on the page is because I get to design and draw characters concurrently. I'm working on like a game with like 250 like different characters in it. And so I get to design like all the clothing and stuff. And it's like a fantasy slash, you know, um, sort of just hype beast, new age, like sort of fashion combination. So it's like a really fun, awesome thing that I get to express with that stuff. So. And, and I'm going to ask everybody this. Since uh, comics, again, are so collaborative, you've got a team you work with, an editor, usually somebody else, you know, unless you're doing everything yourself. Do you ever have to pull back and look at what you're doing and go, okay, is this too much? Do I need... Do I need some outside influence? Have I gone too far? I think that's like, for me, that's the point. Like, I want to go too far, you know, and have someone pull me back. Because um, I think that's easier than someone going like, oh, no, I need more, you know? Like, because that's such like a, just aloof thing. It's a lot easier when you give it your all and then like, do they say, hey, just come back a little bit. Then like, you know, you have to ramp up to something. So um, I tend to get pretty in the weeds and crazy about stuff. And I am lucky enough to have like a wife Hussein, you know, and has like a regular job and stuff. So she checks me. That's good. Um, you know, and then, yeah, like friends and family editors, you know, you know, everybody that I work with also, it's, it's definitely like a part of that, I think. But they also, since I'm the visual person of the team, typically, they want me to go like and be crazy about stuff, you know, <laughs> so that they can pull me back about anything. So yeah. I think that is also part of the, the relationship that I've built with the creators that I work with too. So. Yeah. yeah, I don't know about y'all, but I feel like, especially with deadline pressure and everything, I tend to wish that I could have put more of myself in. Oh like, yeah, yeah. When That's you gotta nice. put out a page a day or so like, man, I recently did a comic where I had to do 40 pages in one month. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Which is by far the yeah. most I'd ever done. I'm sorry. And yeah, yeah it's fine. Well. It's cool. It paid quite well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, So rush. we're all good. Did you get the rush? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. good and uh, but at the end, it's like, man, I do wish that I had two more hours a page to to 
go a little crazier, to put more of me in it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I always <laughs> wish that I could, could put, push more of myself into it. And yeah, I, I'll always leave it up to the editors or you know my collaborators to pull me back. Like if I do something too crazy, like um, like one of the only comic pages I've ever drawn that got published was like a Squirrel Girl thing, and there was a character punching somebody's tooth out, and I decided to draw a little face on that tooth, like scre a screaming face. And then I was like, what if that tooth had a tooth? <laughs> and then there was another little tooth coming out of that tooth's mouth, and I was like too much? And the editor was like, no, I love it. I was like, okay. I was going to say, that's Squirrel Girl, though, man. Right. If you're going to go crazy, that's a book. Yeah. Or at least in Marvel. I made my mark. It's like and, and I think it's important to note, like you said, it, it, it depends on, like, the deadline, the team you're working with, the project, you know. Um, I'm lucky enough right now that, like, all the stuff I'm working on is my own stuff. You know, my day job stuff is um, working on other comic stuff, but, like, just as far as my own creative side, it's, like, all my own thing. So I do get to, like, have that time to like put it in, you know, because it is mine kind of the kind of deal. Um, but that is definitely not a luxury always afforded, especially yeah. when you're working on a deadline for other projects. That's for sure. So, the money is the incentive there. So, you know. Yeah, I'm still stuck on that 40 pages in 30 days. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty my, good. Yeah. My lower back still hurts a bit from it. Yeah, you know, a month later. So you don't are. You, so tell me about your screen printing because you uh -huh. do a lot of really cool Gundam stuff too. Like sure, I, yeah. I've seen that, and I know. Just honestly, your stuff is rad. But. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I, I just love anime nonsense. Like, I, uh, I want my comics to feel like I felt when I was playing Final Fantasy VII for the wow. first time or watching Cowboy Bebop or even, like, when I was younger watching Naruto for the first time. Like, I want my, my stories to make you feel like you are going into this world, like you are invested in this new world, and like there is so much more of this world out there than you can even see. Like, I feel like that is what makes that, the very first Star Wars movie like so successful, is that it suggests a universe, even though you only see little glimpses of it. And I, I, I just want, uh, how did I get into this? Wow, what was the question? Uh, what was the question? Just Gundam? Yeah. Oh yeah, so it's just like, I, I'm always wanting to like. Um, you were explaining how you wanted, what you like to get across in your work. Yeah, yeah like, like, take these things that inspired me, assimilate what I can from them, put them into my own work, but sometimes, like, like I love Gundam so much, uh, especially the Universal Century stuff, and uh, I think doing fan art is so valuable, and figuring out what about that thing is special to me, and how can I take that special element and put that into my own work? And so, when I do fan art, uh, especially like fan art posters, that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out. Like, what about Neon Genesis Evangelion? Like, move me, what is special about it to me? What in that aesthetic, like, grabbed me? Uh, and trying to like, understand it fully and also uh, make money from it. Yeah, unfortunately money is the thing. Yeah, well, because I, it's like, you can't, Facilitator. Yeah. and that's the problem with like living in a capitalist society and being an artist. Like, I don't have time to just not make money for stretches of time. Uh, but by doing these other projects, I'm able to explore things that uh, comics that I'm hired to draw don't let me explore. You know. Well, uh, does any figure we could open up for some other questions? If anybody's got anything? No? Cool. Um, how did you, like, so I know you said to get started that you, uh, like, you went to a lot of bands and stuff, but did you, like, go to college for art or anything? You know, I had a very different college experience. Like, I went to a pretty small Southern Baptist college in Oklahoma, and uh, my family's, like, very conservative. And they, 
my my dad especially kind of pushed me towards business and uh, I, I feel like it I kind of always knew who I was, but I wasn't always very accepting of who I, I think I was, I was afraid of who I was because, uh, you know, like dominant culture will, uh, will put messages in your mind about what is a good career path, what's uh, a good way to express your identity, all these things. And uh, it can be real easy to, to kind of become afraid of who you are and what you love. And so I studied business in college, which was fine. I was not a very good student. I had some undiagnosed uh, learning disabilities uh, and really struggled and decided uh, so basically like two weeks before graduation, my senior year of college, uh, I got a phone call and they're like, hey, we saw you applied for graduation. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, well, you're missing a class required for your your degree. And I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, your advisor was using an old mm -hmm. class requirement sheet. Oh. And so you've got to come back for the semester because you can't take the last 10 semesters or the last 10 hours oh. somewhere else. So I, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, yes. The last, 10, the last 10 hours. And so I was like, okay. Uh, so I was pretty upset about this and but decided like if I have to come back to Oklahoma oh. to finish this degree, can I just do an art degree? And I did an art degree in one year. Oh, damn. Yeah, so I did 60 hours of, of studio art classes and a finance class and worked at Sears for 30 hours a week. <laughs> and so I just like, I just really did not sleep. It was like a weird <laughs> trial by fire of going to art school, but I actually really loved it. And, uh, yeah, it was beautiful. So I don't know. What did have, you What did you learn at art school? That I, you, that I you learned. Now? I learned to hit deadlines. <laughs> okay. You know, I learned how to push myself. I learned to like coffee. <laughs> but I feel like that's just what college is supposed to be about, anyways. Sure. Like, I, I don't think yeah. you need to go to art school. I think that. Especially if you want to do something really expressive that isn't highly technical, like if you want to, if you want to get into animation or visual effects, things like that, there's probably some real value in going to school for that. If you want to do comics, if you want to do 2D animation, if you want to be an illustrator, you don't need to go to school for it. You can do all of that stuff on your own. You can. You can get all the instruction you want off YouTube. The, the real crux of it is, are you going to do it on your own? Are yeah. you, do you have the drive and the personality to, find, to even find out what you need to know and then make yourself learn all of it? So, and I don't know if I did. I didn't. At 20, I didn't. I needed someone to kind of kick my butt. So. I feel like that's everybody at 20. Yeah, sure. Like, well, yeah. I mean. There are those people who are just like, like freak talents, you know? Yeah, that's yeah, very true. I'm with you 100%. I think like it is like, there is a talent side of it. Some people just have a natural talent, you know? Like, I mean, you know, players like Michael Jordan, Steph Curry, like these guys exist, you know? Um, although they do practice a lot, you know? And I sure. think that that's at the end of the day, that's like what it is, is putting it into practice, you know? It's not only just the learning of it, because I think there are plenty of people who yeah. will watch those YouTube videos, but they won't put it into practice. Exactly. Um, and that practical knowledge and practice is like 100% what will set you above like, you know, the other people around, I think. Because um, I, I honestly didn't start drawing. Like I'm of sort of a similar kind of thing. I went to, my, my experience with the weird credit thing was in high school. I moved from New York down to, to Florida, oh. and they had told me that this one math class that I had taken counted as this one credit, so I took like the above class, like beyond that one and whatever went on. And then when I got to my final senior year, they're like, hey, yeah, that credit that we said was that, it wasn't that, so you gotta go take like basic <laughs> intro math, you know, again, <laughs> like or whatever. And, uh, but I ended up being able to take it over like a summer course, essentially, yeah. like, cause they caught it early enough for me to do that. Um, but it was like literally the same silly setup and then I went to community college first um, moved out to San Diego and, uh, and then 
dropped out of college because I met Brian Stelfreeze and he sort of told me to move over here and he'd teach me and I did that. That's so, awesome. Uh, that's yeah. somebody to listen to. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. He taught me everything I know about comics and storytelling. If, if Brian so. Stelfreeze tells you to do something, just oh, do that. Oh, absolutely, man. I was going to yeah, say, yeah, if Brian Stelfreeze called and told me to jump, that's, that's okay, we're done. Yeah, I'm yeah. yeah. I, I also owe my career to Brian Stelfreeze. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just he, he's he's actually definitely like influenced. I think so many people. It's it's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, just I, I wasn't gonna lose miss that opportunity. So and I was studio mates with him for ten years. So that's, that's awesome. That's yeah, wild. Yeah, yeah, I got a lot of awesome experience, practical knowledge, and that's what it was. It's just practical knowledge and practice. You know, he was hard on me about like just like hey, you need to try this and work on this and come back with this and you know like all of that. So he's really really good at putting into words like abstract absolutely like, art things <laughs> absolutely absolutely, absolutely. Right. making it relatable we so. should call him <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> FaceTime. um <laughs> he's in canada right now so that's the uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh i i will say just on this point and then i'll get to your question uh gail simone famously said that you know everybody kept telling her yeah and like you said there are people with talent that just have it but she got mad when somebody told her, oh, you're just so talented. She's like, no, I worked a hairdressing job. I went to school, and then I found 20 minutes a night to write, and I just did it. Yeah. So yeah. practice makes perfect. The thing is in the doing. Yeah. <laughs> what was your question? Then? Oh, um, so I, um, we were talking about things that inspired you and the things that you do and everything like that. I would like to hear what, um, what does everybody else like? What inspires you to do what you do? Like what things that you grow up on that you see um, – like he saw Gundam, Naruto, things like that. What shows or media or shoot just life itself inspires the things that you do? What push, what, what do you put on paper that you see outside? Uh, I'm of the same boat as Rico. I do things selfishly. Like, I think a lot of the things that I create and I want to do are for me, you know? Like, it's a lot of stuff that I'm just like, man, I think this is really cool. Um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of times when you do stuff like that, you don't find everybody else that finds it cool or whatever, and that's okay. Um, I think like for influences, I've been influenced by all kinds of things. That's why I think uh, everybody here on this board probably has a lot of those different influences because, you know, we all like different stuff. You know, I don't think anybody sitting here is like the person that you could go to and go, hey, I want that one exact thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. You know, I think everybody here has sort of that creative bug. And um, because of that, you know, I'm also influenced by a lot of things. So my influences come from sort of like music, hip hop, and uh rap and um you know anime uh, big fan of naruto big fan of all, all kind of stuff um you know comics and uh and then my peers you know my friends people i play games with people i hang out with um you know my wife and all of that kind of stuff these people all influence me on my day-to-day -day stuff so i feel like you forgot sneakers oh and sneakers too i mean yeah that's part of it that's part of the whole thing you know that's yeah, yeah they all influence on that yeah. but rico yeah what uh, i like that what's your what's your inspirations um i like a lot of mid-century like American illustrators, um, 80s Marvel comics. Yeah. Um, Batman the animated series. Uh, going, going shopping with my wife, looking at women's fabrics. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I've noticed, like when I look back at my Instagram, like over the years, like my color palettes are like kind of seasonal. Like, mm. like I'm really into yellow, like for you know five months, and then I'm, I'm really <laughs> like just weird. Weird patterns that I notice in my work pop up, and I think it's just from, I don't know, external stimulation, seasons, and stuff like that. You're gonna get some fabrics, so might as well be women's fabrics. You're not getting that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're definitely not here for us. So. No. Wish it was. <laughs> so if you could do something else, um, like what's your what's your next big thing? Say, take shirts or what's what's your next big thing? What do you want to do? I want to make sneakers with Hoyt. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're know. gonna do that. We're gonna do that. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I want to make like really high-end uh, jackets and bags, like ballistic nylon stuff. Yeah. Uh, that their sneaker models can wear. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. Yeah. Let's, let's yeah. We got a fashion. Yeah, we got the whole the whole squad here. Exactly. Yeah, I, I do like designing uh, tights patterns. So. Yeah. Some yeah. big jackets, tights, and sneakers. It's a good yeah, one. We're right there, man. All right, cool. <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah, yeah, I heard it here first. New line coming. We need a name. Go. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, a question on, uh, as you guys are starting out, you're taking your careers and you're starting to see your interests. Um, how does your networking start? Like, how do you start networking? Like, you went to college, 
uh, a AOL instant messenger and message and mess <laughs> me message boards were really oh, big. Man. When uh, I started doing stuff, I was working a um, I was working an overnight shift at Kinko's, which while I was there turned to FedEx Kinko's, um, and that's where I met my wife too. But I was working just overnight shift and like it was kind of slow. You would get done like in the first couple hours with all your work, and you just be like playing spades with your your coworker and then. <laughs> Maybe, uh, you know, yeah, I was looking at message boards. Like, there was one called Operas and Shane Glines' message boards, and there was all these artists on there, and everybody was really open with, like, knowledge. Like, you could just, like, I want to learn how to do this, or I just learned by mimicking other artists and their kind of stuff. Like, I was learning Photoshop. Like, I had never had access to a computer before that, and uh, that's, that's where I learned everything. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, we are from the before times where <laughs> there were no smartphones and right. internet took a long time. And if somebody else picked up the phone in the house, it was over. Yeah, let me show you this picture I made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's getting better. And, it's styling. And Here then we somebody go. calls, and then you got to start over. Yeah, right, right. Get off the phone, I need to use the internet. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, Sorry, what was the question? So no, uh, space for so a second. Oh, how know? did I get started in the thing networking? Um, uh, definitely like right here, doing exactly what you're doing right now. Um, yeah. Like going to conventions is really how I think I built my first network, at least in comics. Um, if you want to branch out to other areas, there's all kinds of other like events and conventions. Coming back now, obviously, the past couple of years have been Rough. sort of a hiatus, yeah, and all of that stuff. But um, I think like once that stuff starts catching up, that's probably a really good thing to do. I think in this age that we've gone like so digital, you know, you make an in-person connection, it, it sort of leaves a mark versus just, you know, being another um, picture and a username online. So. Yeah, if you're looking to create comics and, and build a network as a comic creator, uh, the thing that I found most helpful, because I, I started making comics pretty late. I, I think I was a 27 when I drew my first comic. Uh, and I went to Heroes Con, first convention that I ever attended, and I printed up a bunch of these comics and I had just started a Twitter account, I had, and I went I had, around. I had that comic. Yeah, you yeah. which one? Which the one? The virus one? Is it? No, that Before was like that? the third one. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, oh yeah. sheesh. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so I just went around, met creators that I liked, um, gave them my comic, you know, sometimes bought stuff, and then after I met them and gave them my comic, I followed them on Twitter, uh, and the people who remember you and were into what you do, some of them will follow you back and just kind of staying in touch without being aggressive. And I think uh, meeting in person first is like such a uh, was such a huge thing for me, and sh especially shows like Heroes Con that are like so focused on comics only. It's hard to beat that from a networking perspective because there are so many creators there, so you have so many opportunities to meet people. Um, and they are all going to be uh, interested in discovering something new and interesting. So as long as you're not like pushy, as long as you're kind and patient, um, I don't think you can do better than, than actually meeting someone in real life. Uh, and, and I will say MomoCon is my favorite convention. I love this convention. Yeah. Um, my second favorite is also Heroes, because if you do want comics networking, that is the show to go to. Uh, it's a couple of weeks from now, what, like three? Uh, it's in Charlotte, North Carolina. So you're not even missing this show to go to that show. <laughs> um, but no, it, it is the most comics-focused show I've ever been to. Um, and that's, you know, I go to Emerald City and Seattle, New York, Chicago, but Heroes Con is the networking comics. And that's how I met all of you, I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. Just showed up and said hi. Yeah, I used to work there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the train. But yeah, yeah that's, that's been the best way I've seen. And, and to Hoyt's point, too, about um, branching out their other shows, like, you can go to other conventions, too. That's... I, I went to one this last year. I, I went to a wrestling convention, and that was really cool. So I met a lot of neat people. But yeah, I go to sneaker conventions. So, you so know, that's cool. That exists, so. 
Are there shirt conventions? I would go to a shirt convention. There's, yeah, there's like the flat stock conventions. It's like mostly poster artists. I think and Decon, designer con. True. Would probably designer be cons, like okay. shirts, toys, sneakers, that type stuff. Is that so. the one out in LA? Yeah, yeah. 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 Anaheim. Well, uh, after, after we incorporate, we'll have to. That's right. <laughs> we'll get, a, get our booth. We get our I've been booth, incorporated. Yeah. Can I get a thank you <laughs> in the liners? I'm just kidding. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what are y'all working on now? What can we do? How can we help you? How can we find you? Besides here. Grim. Grim, yeah. Grim is solid, too. Yeah. Like, just, just from book. the retail side, there have been a lot of, like, Grim Reaper stories, especially in the last, like, five to ten years. This is the first issue that's been real, real good. I'm trying. I'm, I drew. Uh, I'm trying to get everybody on the team to do a, a drawing of themselves as a Grim Reaper, like in the black and red style of yeah. the of the book. So look for that online if you want to participate. It's going to be called uh, hashtag Grim Sona, kind of like <laughs> when we did Sona. Spider Sonas nice. a few years ago when Spider Verse came out. Just kind of trying to copy. So so <laughs> hashtag peer pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if if you post a drawing of yourself as a Grim Sona, I will definitely retweet. <laughs> Twitter, or Twitter, Twitter, yeah, Instagram, whatever. I'll share it. Tag me. <laughs> yeah. What are you up to lately? Uh, so, I drew an issue of Barbaric from yes. Vault Comics, cool. and that'll be out next month. It's called Barbaric: The Harvest Blade. Uh, that's the book I drew in a month, forty pages in a month. I was wow. gonna say, was that? Uh, yeah, I was about to ask. Oh, okay. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You do have to. You can see. You can see my pain and my joy on the page. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I'm I'm r really happy with how it turned out. I'm, uh, and then I'm writing and drawing uh, a kind of a science fiction thing that is not announced, and it'll be, Ooh. it'll probably be next year before it's out. But I'm super excited just because, like we were talking about, wanting to put more of yourself into the thing. It's just like. It's the thing that I've made that has the most of me in it. And so I'm really excited for people to both see more of me. And I'm also very <laughs> nervous. I'm scared, All you know? Because you're, yeah, you're so, <laughs> yeah. You're, you, when you put yourself into something, you're vulnerable. If they don't like this, they don't then like you me. you just don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the biggest fear every time, yeah. man. Yeah. It's like, oh, man, yeah. they're not going to like me. That's the, yeah. the benefit of collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> no, they liked it. It was their fault. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. That's why I have business partners. <laughs> <laughs> what was your question? Uh, if like in the future somebody is looking to kind of, um, I guess, elevate their work into a comic or into a graphic novel, uh, what do you think would be the best avenue of the, like getting a team together uh, to make that happen? I think the best way is to make friends because it's very difficult to. Uh, raise the money to pay people fair rates for a graphic novel. Uh, I just think that, especially if you're starting out, make, make things you want to make with people you want to make them with. Like, I think ha having friends that you're passionate about working with is the best way to get started. Because I think you, you don't realize how much you'll actually be working with these people. You know, so that's one of those things that you get caught up with somebody that you don't like, it becomes tough, you know, like you were saying earlier. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's um, real true. Yeah, it becomes like impossible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and to start off making your team, you know, I think like um, if you don't know anybody personally um, that does the stuff that you're, you're interested in doing, you know, like uh, most of the stuff that I work on that's my own stuff is written by my friend Trey. We got into comics together because, you know, at the time he was like, hey, I want to be a writer, so I want practice writing. And I was like, I want to be a comic book artist, so write me scripts and I'll draw them just so we can practice together. And we ended up just building a relationship and really just love working with each other now. Um, but that happened, like, sort of organically. Yeah. And, um, you know, like, like you said, I think uh, making friends is the most important thing, you know, because they're, you can trust their opinion to, to a certain degree and you know that they're, like, invested in the project as well. Because um, I think a lot of times you, you pay somebody for it uh, or whatever, you're not going to necessarily get the like oomph that you would get from the person if it's like something that they have a stake in, you know. So. And if you're in a, if you're like me and over forty and don't know how to make friends, conventions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> conventions. Because yeah, it, uh, you don't realize that till you get old. It's hard to make friends. Yeah. Sure. Like, it really is. Yeah. That's a, that awkward adult friendship, like. 
Do yeah. we hang? Do I text you? Yeah. <laughs> Do I wait for the next con to see you again? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, spitball, dream project, anything. Anything at all. Dream project? What do you got? I don't know. I, I, I was started working on pinball machines for Stern last year, and oh. that was a dream job, but then I got fired on Christmas Eve. What? <laughs> that is cold. You took me on an emotional journey. Well, one of the machines I worked on is downstairs. It's a Godzilla machine. Shut the front door. Yeah. So yeah, I did some work on that one. And that. Yeah. Do we play it in his honor? Or do no, we no, get some I'm baseball bats? <laughs> don't don't break the machine. Okay. <laughs> Rage. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that was a bummer. Sorry. Get, get a Sorry, sign. guys. <laughs> Justice for Rico. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. But no, I mean, but you get to do all your own cool stuff. I mean, that's really rad. Yeah. Yeah. And you you work on She-Hulk, too. Like, yeah, I love don't, She-Hulk. Don't let those pinball people get you down. I won't. You're going to work I'm with Point oh, on Shoes. I'm working on Batgirls right now. Oh, that's right. That. That's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I might be doing that. I'm doing it for two issues right now. Might do four more after that, but I'm not sure. That's with Becky and Michael? Yep. I like them. And Robbie and... Oh, and Robbie. Robbie. Do you remember Bazooka Jewels? That I book? sure don't. Well, that guy who did that is drawing it next. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I think for me, my dream job would be this uh, comic that I'm writing and slowly, slowly drawing called Proxima. And it's like, uh, I want to do like a real long science fiction fantasy epic thing. I want to do like my bone, you know? I want to make a thing that I will be remembered for and uh, that uh, get tran gets translated. Like, uh, I just want to be able to do what I do uh, more successfully and be able to like, I don't know, hang out with Hideo Kojima or something. <laughs> I want to meet all the. I want to meet all the Japanese. Like, I want to meet the mangaka and the video game creators that I admire. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, dream job would probably be uh, at this point the shoe company. Some kind of collaboration with a major shoe distributor would be awesome. You know, um, and that's at this point a dream. You know, I think like we're gonna start small and like have some fun with it, which I think, like you were saying, is exciting because I get to put all my own like stuff into it. You know, with no no need to worry about. Um, working with anybody else on that kind of stuff because although that would be a dream I'm sure like you know Nike and Adidas or whatever has their own like set of limitations and rules about what I'd be able to do you know with their shoes so um, yeah, that's yeah like to echo everybody else pretty pretty dreamy right now so all right one last question just because I completely forgot all the other things and then we will make sure get everybody to know where you are what came first comics or other But I guess comics, because yeah. I mean, I had a, I, I traced my color palette influence back to a Superman coloring book my grandmother got me when I was huh. six. Like, if you look at the cover of this thing, it is like my palette to this day. Like, huh. Superman's blue is kind of purple. His cape is kind of pink. It's really weird. <laughs> like, I, I, you still have it? I don't have it, but I, when I was, I was, I saw the book out one day, and I think it's like the back cover has this image on it, and it is like, I was like, it just triggered all these memories, and I was like, that's really weird. Huh. But yeah, so I, that was kind of a comic. It was like a comic coloring book. Yeah. That was the first step on your journey. Yeah, really weird. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> comics for me. It was like, the late Claremont, Jim Lee X-Men stuff. And that's still like so much a part of my DNA. Even in this barbaric book that I drew super fast, I, uh, I haven't like copied Jim Lee in a long time, but there are like five or six pages where I'm like, oh shoot, that's a Jim Lee face. So, like, <laughs> like when I'm drawing my maximum speed, I just revert to 12 year old Robert, you know? <laughs> What was the question? I was so lost. Oh, comics. comics. Comics came first, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used, uh, for me, uh, my parents uh, didn't really get along a lot when I was a kid, so comics were a huge escape for me um, to be able to just, like, read and get into, like, another world. And my, my pops wasn't around, so, uh, you know, I think they sort of gave me a lot of, like, guidance as well, as silly, silly as that sounds. But when you're reading about, like, heroes and doing the right thing and all of that stuff, I think that has an influence on you, too. So. 
All right. Um, so everybody's down in the artist alley. Yep. That's B4, yes. all that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you know a table? 402, I think. <laughs> Four, 400 something? Yeah, 400 something. Yeah. I'm, I'm behind them, so I'm like yeah. three we're something. We're all in a little yeah, pod. Yeah, we're in a little pod. We're in a little box right there as soon as you walk in ours. Yeah, we're like right by, we're the first artist tables after the information booth. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Are? Right. Well, thank you all. No longer mint.com. Yeah, no longer mint. And who is Rico? I have totally given that out to so many people. That's awesome. <laughs> I should just send you a box of business cards for the show. <laughs> That's not a joke. Please do. <laughs> okay. She won't give anybody. She'll keep it. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> like I said. All right. Well, cool. thank you all so much for spending your yeah, time with me you. this morning oh, talking about stuff I was curious about. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the show. Yeah. <laughs> so. Thank you so much. Real talk. Yeah.